So I got this email yesterday that really stood out and I wanted to go over it and I figured I'd just read it with, uh, with you guys. Um, it says, uh, call me if you're interested uh, in talking. Uh, links below give one a pretty good picture regarding what my family has gone through due to the evil criminal justice system in Maine. My son will never be the same. I really admire you for your work and blah, blah. Um, And then she gives me her phone number and a link. So we'll look at this link. Picture of a bloody pants. U.S. and Maine Constitution dead in Maine. Um, from Charlotte is um, Israelite. Let's see if we can read through this. Um, the case was originally out of the Cumberland County Maine District Attorney's Office um, with all her crew of lying assistant DAs but due to DA knowing they could win against us, she moved it into the Attorney General's office, couldn't win against us, she moved it to the Attorney General's office, which uh, couldn't win either until initial Portland Police Department's report, which was excellent, and said probable cause for at least elevated aggravated assault charges against Fred Dodge was trashed, and Sam for the first time became a defendant, with Fred for criminal threatening and with dangerous weapon, reckless conduct and dangerous weapon, both are felony charges. So I'm thinking Fred is her son. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm reading this for the first time. Uh, and this looks like an email that she sent. Please read the May 10th letter I sent in my son Sam Stead to Cumberland County, Maine District. Um, Attorney Stephanie Anderson regarding the case related to mishandling malicious prosecution of the Frederick Otis Dodge attempted murder of my son Samuel Thomas Iserbite. Um, letter is at the very bottom of this email. Before I get started, let me bring to your attention below what we consider key uh, to acceptance of our account of the Fred Dodge murder attempt, which are in addition to all the witness statements that incriminate Fred Dodge and in a, any reasonable person's judgment prove without a doubt that Fred Dodge planned and carried out the murderous attack on my son Sam Iserbite last Memorial Day. Uh, May 30, 2016. The eyewitness, um, Elisa Connell, in her call to 911, gave an account of the incident as it took place in real time. Other witnesses stated that they saw Dodge coming down Chadwick Street brandishing a gun, threatening with foul language to murder Sam, and when he arrived at Sam's porch steps, taking out his gun and pointing it at him. Why were none of these witnesses called to testify at either Sam's or Fred's grand jury hearings? Why were the two policemen first at the scene on the crime, Sergeant Goodall and ben Bennis, not called to testify at either Sam's or Fred's grand jury hearings? It was Sergeant Bennis who questioned Sam regarding who shot you and got following the following response from Sam, quote, Fred Dodge. Yes, the jury was perhaps given or read parts of their statements. We do not know for certain, but were jury members given copies of their statements? Since neither Goodall or, nor Bennis were present in the courtroom, uh, jury members were unable to ask questions of them. According to the ADA Jonathan Sherbeck, with whom Sam, our attorney, and I met a few days before Sam's grand jury hearing testimony in early November 2016, Assistant District Attorney um, name removed for obvious reasons, said, date not given. May, quote, may we should take another look. Maybe we should take another look. I may have been mistaken. Um, on a statement following her decision taken four months earlier on July 2016, not to prosecute Fred Dodge since she or the state could not get a unanimous um, jury. I guess she's talking about the grand jury. So it, they went before grand jury. They couldn't come to a unanimous decision whether to prosecute, um, I guess, this Fred Dodge guy for attempting to murder her son, Sam. That's what I'm gathering here. Above comments by ADA Sherbeck um, were transcribed from Charlotte um, Israbite's shorthand notes taken the day of the meeting with ADA um, Sherbeck. Uh, we are unaware of whether or not that meeting was taped by the office of the DA. However, shorthand does not lie. Uh, so there's a good chance, even if it was um, recorded, there's no way you're ever going to get a copy of that recording because of Maine's privacy laws and their refusal half the time to release information like that. 
The ADA's initial statement of, um, that the state did not have enough evidence to prosecute flew in the face of numerous witnesses, including eyewitnesses statements given to the Portland Police Department the night of the incident. Sergeant Detective Dean Goodall, who was superintendent of the investigation and subsequently in charge of the Portland Police report, told me a couple of days after the incident that there were quite a few people mingling on the street that night, whether it was beautiful and that he had the opportunity to talk to them, and they all corroborated um, Sam's story regarding what happened. This corroboration was followed up by signed witness statements attached to the Portland Police Department report. Acceptance by DA of Fred Dodge account that Sam shot himself in the leg this false account was cooked up by Fred Dodge prior to his attack on Sam using Sam's gun, which, by the way, was just one of the pieces of evidence never tested for fingerprints or DNA. Once again, a completely botched investigation by police officers in Maine that have little to no training. It's a joke up there. I mean, it's a joke all across the country. That's why we need police reform and we need better police accountability measures. And when police do stupid stuff like this and do horrible investigations, um, there's accountability for that because this is pervasive throughout the police departments where they just I mean I looked into a case um, Amber Fagree where two main state troopers shot and killed Amber Fagree and Cat Har Bailey and just basic stuff like right after the shooting took place when the um, DA um, investigator arrived didn't even test them for drugs or alcohol I mean, if you get into a fender bender as a truck driver, you immediately have your blood drawn so it can be tested for drugs and alcohol. But Maine State Police can literally kill two people and their blood is not tested. Unacceptable. Same here. Unacceptable that this gun was not tested for fingerprints. Or gun residue on Sam's hand would have helped too. I mean, just incompetent investigations. Assistant Attorney General Lisa Murchies. Oh, didn't we... Um, uh, th that name sounds familiar. I think um, she was in a corruption case on another um, thing that I covered a few days ago on the phone uh, on May 24 at 5 p.m. There was no, she said there was no evidence to be tested. Um, um, they're saying that there, there's an image below which was also not tested of, of a photo of Sam's blood drenched jeans. Yeah, we saw the blood drenched jeans. So there was no evidence to be tested. Wow. Um, a cracked cell phone was also not tested. Wow. Most important of all is the fact that Sam's gun, one Fred used to shoot him, was never tested. This is incredible. The incompetence that I'm seeing here. Dodge's pre-attempted murder cooked up account was called into the Portland Police Department on Fred's cell phone several minutes after he shot Sam who he told Detective Dunham was his lifelong friend. Not true. So there's lies going on here, but that can happen with different witness statements. Um, uh, do you ever leave your lifelong friend dying in a pool of blood? This quote, Sam shot himself in the leg, unquote, account was also curiously enough the account relayed to the West End Neighborhood Association by whom which included in its website minutes of its WENA meeting on June 8, 2016, uh, which can be found at this website here. Um, we name -E org. The following text, quote, the recent shooting on Chadwick Street appears to have been a self-inflicted wound. No arrests have been made the wounded person is known to Portland Police Department but is not expected to be an imminent threat to the neighborhood even after his long recovery." End quote. Was it legal for the NENA to publish on its website Fred Dodge's version of the incident um, that Sam as accomplished, an accomplished Marine Corps rifleman and combat veteran had shot himself in the leg one week before the Portland Police Department had completed its official report, which did not state that Sam had shot himself in the leg. The Portland Police Department report implicated um, Dodge in what it considered elevated and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. So it seems like in the police report they were saying Dodge did it, but the grand jury decided that there wasn't enough evidence to prosecute Dodge, uh, despite the fact that none of the witnesses were 
presented to the grand jury, so they didn't get the complete picture. Um, this whole story rings very true to me, uh, and it's pretty amazing. Um, was it legal uh, for the uh, WENA website to allow Dodge's account to go public eight days prior to the official Portland Police Department uh, report, which included a very different account regarding what happened, according to Sergeant Bennis, first on the crime scene, who reported Sam's response to his question, who shot you, as follows, quote, Fred Dodge. So he literally said, Fred Dodge shot me directly after the police arrived on the scene. Uh, Fred Dodge lies. The transcript of Fred Dodge testimony at grand jury hearing in early December 2016 contains a 50 plus page of foul language, irrelevant lying testimony, defamation of Sam's character, as well as character of the other witnesses, etc. Which is, I often see this in law enforcement in grand juries and in prosecutors' offices. Whoever shows up first and tells the most compelling story, whoever is the better orator, um, orator of their story, who looks better, um, see, is the, they are believed above the other person. So literally you could have somebody that's um, very uneducated, not a very good orator, and um, they come into the police department and they tell their story, um, and they're very honest and truthful, but because somebody else in a slick, you know, pinstripe shoot, suit shows up and tells a better story, they're believed over the other story, regardless of what story is true or not. Whoever tells the better story is believed. I see that all the time. 88 Sharbeck refrained from stopping Fred other than a few times. Dodge's lying testimony should have been thrown out due to its total irrelevance to what led up to and what actually happened on Memorial Day in 2016. Um, we should note that this narrative is also being told from the perspective of uh, Sam's mother, so we should look at it with a grain of salt as well. But everything that I'm reading here just rings true to me. Sam's testimony, on the other hand, at his grand jury hearing taken one month earlier was in stark contrast to Fred's testimony. Sam told the truth and nothing but the truth since he, the injury, had absolutely nothing to hide having the injured had absolutely nothing to hide having committed no crime whatsoever uh, so the victim was not believed and the perpetrator was believed which we don't know all the evidence that was in that grand jury but that is um, interesting detective Dunham who interrogated Fred Dodge the night of the attack of the, the Dodge attack on Sam um, uh, ferociously charged Um, vociferously charged, not familiar with that word, uh, Fred with lying several times during the interview. He also, for some very, very bizarre reason, told Fred not to lose any sleep over this. Dunham also, interestingly enough, retired several weeks after the incident. And we'll learn more about Dunham in a second here. But um, Delayed in calling the ambulance. The EMS was not notified until 8.55, 22 minutes after the gunshot wound um, through the femoral artery. Wow, he could have died from this. This was totally attempted murder or suicidal attempt, but the police should have been called. EMS should have been called sooner than that. Police dispatch protocol across the nation calls for immediate EMS in response to a gunshot wound, even if the guy looks dead, I might add which um, this guy was still alive. Who exactly was responsible for the delay, which resulted in Sam being one minute from death? Wow. Had Sam not lived three houses, one half a block from a hospital, he would have been dead on arrival. My, my, my son, Sam Isserbite, and I have been involved in trying to get the truth out regarding two murder attempts on Sam between November 2015 on Memorial Day and on Memorial Day in 2016. The first plan to murder Sam is known as the pop in the head incident in November 2015. So my question is why did, what's the motivation for wanting Sam dead? What has he done? I'm not seeing the motivation yet in this article, but let's read on. Uh, the police, let's, I forgot, I forgot I can make this bigger. The police audio tape provided Sam um, by mistake and district attorney discovery materials and included 
is included as attachment one to this email. Listen carefully. First comment by um, Hurley. If we had moved, I would have popped him in the head. That was my plan. Is followed up by another most curious statement by Patrolman um, Ryder. Um, this is not federal anymore. Also included in comment, Graham Holtz and the chief are on the phone. Is she saying that the police were trying to kill her son? That's what it looks like. Patrolman Hurley and Patrolman Ryder. So Patrolman Hurley said, if he had not moved, I would have popped him in the head. That was my plan. So she's saying that the Portland Police Department patrol officers were trying to kill her son. This is not federal anymore. Also included in the comment, Graham Holtz and the chief are on the phone. Sam was successful without an attorney to get Assistant District Attorney Jennifer Ackerman to dismiss cooked up charges related to Sam's curious October 2015 misdemeanor charge which resulted in above pop in the head incident and audio tape. Wow. So this story just took a turn in my mind today unless I missed it early in the article where she said that the Portland Police Department were trying to kill her son. Matt uh, Byrne, one of your journalists, covered the most recent uh, 2016 Memorial Day incident. We have had nothing but cooperation from Matt related to this incident. We've recently been in touch with Ed Murphy, who has been equally cooperative. Both of you, the top PPH and uh, BND editors, Portland Press Herald and Bangor Daily News editors, have undoubtedly been advised regarding our wish to have the Portland Press Herald and Bangor Daily News do extensive, truthful coverage of the most recent 2016 Memorial Day tragic incident, which will affect negatively the rest of my son's life and is left in what's left of mine as well. I will uh, just interject here and say that both of those news agencies, in my view, um, tend to cover up for police misconduct in Maine and don't give it a fair shake. I don't know why that is. It really disturbs me that the Maine press including uh, television press, do a horrible job at covering corruption in Maine. Up front, Sam and I want both of you to know we have the highest regard for um, and respect for several Portland Police Department officers and detectives who were present at the crime scene the night of the attempted murder incident and who were in charge of the official Police Department report. What has bothered us for many months is District Attorney Anderson's malicious prosecution of the case, her trashing of um, the original excellent uh, Portland Police Department report, which included Alyssa Conley's eyewitness recorded statement, as well as other witness statements, all of which related to and corroborated my son's version of Fred Dodge's pre-planned attempt to murder him on uh, May 30, 2016. Um, this email is quite urgent since Sam and I waited Sam and I have waited many months for the truth to be told truth which affects not only Sam and me his mother and his family but all citizens of the city of Portland Maine and the rest of the United States of America and any corruption in any state is wrong including in the state of Maine where it is um, prolific why because Sam, from the time of the shooting and throughout the past uh, year, has had all relevant constitutional rights denied, including American citizens' right to defend themselves and their property with a firearm. Frederick Otis Dodge is fortunate indeed that Sam did not react by shooting him. Sam just remained sitting in a chair on his porch, warned Fred with a laser dot, and used the laser dot, according to National Police Journal's prevents I out of 10 inches. Uh, Fred ignored the warning, walked up the porch stairs, grabbed Sam's gun from him, pressed into Sam's femoral artery, and pulled the trigger. Witness statements attest to the fact they saw Dodge walk up the street, threatening with foul language to murder Sam. Dodge, who attempted to murder my son, was not arrested nor charged with any crime um, in 2016, even though Detective Dunham objected several times to Dodge's lies during the interrogation at the headquarters of Portland Police Department. The transcript of Fred Dodge's grand jury 
um, hearing testimony taken last November 2016 includes not only irrelevant statements and defamation of Sam's character, but many outright lies. Sam and I want to simply answer the two questions. One, why was Fred Dodge not arrested, charged, and thrown into jail the night of the incident? Two, was it legal for the DA Anderson to trash the original Portland Police Department's excellent report of the incident and to accept Fred Dodge's lying version of the incident included in his grand jury testimony? Dodge was the only person who could have been involved in the elevated aggravated assault which caused Sam to be closed to death upon the arrival at the hospital. The District Attorney Anderson's malicious prosecution due to her anger over Sam's delivery of a tort claim against the entire city of Portland post-Dodge attempt on his life resulted in the quite clever steered grand jury indictment of Fred and Sam on two identical felony charges. Sam had up until Anderson's reframing of the charges been considered by PPD as a victim. All right, so the picture is starting to be painted that it looks like Sam was critical of the Portland Police Department and this district attorney is retaliating against him, which um, is a pretty interesting narrative since I see that all the time. Anderson reframed, re reframed the charges so that Sam became co-equal with Fred as a defendant. Then in order to get Fred off, D.A. Anderson and Sam's prosecutor, Robert Bud Ellis, um, had to get Sam to accept the same deal, dismissal with prejudice, which included the Fifth Amendment, which guaranteed neither of them would have to testify against himself in any future trial. Um, Sam's lawyer, who knew Sam, did not want to accept such a dismissal, cooperated with Sam's prosecutor, Assistant Attorney General Robert Ellis, in crafting of the deal since Ellis knew full well he could never go to upcoming trial, jury trial and get an unanimous jury since Sam would have for the first time been able to get all witness statements, photos of bloody wounds and clothes, broken cell phone, etc. Uh, before the jury and the judge. It is obvious to any fair-minded person that much injustice has been dealt not only to Sam and me but to persons in the Portland Police Department who actually who know exactly what happened that day in 2016. Two attempted murders of an innocent tax-paying property owner citizen within eight months is not something citizens of Portland will accept easily. Um, could be the citizens, if informed of the above truthful account, might demand a thorough house cleaning of the city of Portland from top to bottom. Why should they wait until the following well-known saying becomes more and more the case in the wonderful city of Portland, Maine, you know it's true when it happens to you. Please respond to this email by calling either Sam or me. They're, they're, those are the phone numbers. It is our opinion that only a face-to-face -face meeting with both of us, preferably at Sam's house, um, scene of the crime will allow you to understand the depth of the story, to understand that my son, a U.S. Marine with active combat duty in Gulf War one a tax-paying homeowner in the city of Portland was the innocent victim of two attempted murders over a period of six months, both of which have been criminally slept, swept under the rug by the district attorney's office. Letter to D.A. Anderson, uh, May 11, 2016, 2017. Dear District Attorney Anderson, as the mother of Sam Isserbite, I request you seriously rethink the injustice your office has rendered to not just my son in the Portland Police Department, the trashing of an excellent Portland Police Department report related to my son's attempted murder by Frederick Otis Dodge on May, on Memorial Day 2016, but to all citizens of Portland, Maine, who could themselves be victimized by Fred Dodge, who was never charged with a crime, and who now, one year later, due to prosecutorial misconduct resulting in a steered jury hearing, continues free to walk the streets of Portland with a firearm. How would you feel as an 86-year-old mother receiving a phone call at 12.30 a.m. in 2016 from a neurosurgeon telling you that your son has been shot through the femoral artery, survived to surgery, and is in intensive care at medical Maine Medical Center? You may recall my email to Lieutenant Beaumont in sweat 
sent shortly after the incident in which I requested a meeting with you and others to discuss what I might at the time considered the mishandling by your office of the attempted murder of my son by Fred Dodge. Not receiving a response from you or anyone else in your office naturally resulted in a healthy dose of skepticism on my part regarding the handling of the incident. Having from the um, fallout being from the very beginning um, being involved in Sam's case, attempting to deal medical, psychological, and legal of two very serious murder attempts and subsequent cover-ups. I feel compelled to offer to you Sam's solution to the above stated injustice. Sam is willing to drop the planned tort claim against the city of Portland if you will very simply reconsider your office's questionable activity, re activity related to the handling of the incident on May 30, 2016, and Prosecutor Fred Dodge for elevating aggravated assault in violation of the law. Sam asks that your office prosecute language in the Portland um, Police Department report affidavit. I, Detective Kelly Gorham, duly sworn law officer, officer of the uh, Portland Police Department, hereby state under oath and under penalties and pain and perjury that there is probable cause to believe that all of which constitutes evidence of a crime of elevated aggravated assault in violation of the law. The following actions by your officer would be a good starting point. Resurrect the original excellent 2016 police um, report, which includes eyewitness statements from Alyssa Connolly, um, who saw the potential deadly confrontation um, in my son's dropping to the deck. Um, she was the 911 caller. Statement from Sergeant Michael Bennis, who thank God took it upon himself to apply a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. Elicit from Sam the fact that Fred Dodge shot him, as well as statements from many witnesses who documented in detail Dodge coming down a weapon, Dodge is coming down a weapon and threatening to murder Sam. The aforementioned witness statements are all you will ever need to put Dodge in jail the night of the incident. Ordinarily, the person, in this case Fred Dodge, who was not the injured party, who fled the scene of the crime with a gun in hand, leaving my son bleeding to death, would be arrested. For some very weird reason, the decision to release Dodge was made at the highest level prior to Detective Durham's interrogation of Dodge, during which Dodge um, Voraciously challenged uh, Dodge's lies. Interrogation included in discovery. Maybe you should be willing to take another look at the case and suggested at one point by ADA Sheridan and prosecute Frederick Otis Dodge under elevated aggravated assault and violation of the law. Conviction of Dodge would assure the citizens of Portland that he no longer is free to roam the streets of Portland, Maine with a gun. Your office should be willing to admit that it made a huge mistake when it replaced the honest police report with the report that Fred Dodge's lying version of what happened to the effect that Samuel Isserbite, an experienced U.S. Marine Corps rifleman and Gulf War veteran, com Gulf War I combat veteran, shot himself in the leg. Why is the version of Dodge, in our opinion, the criminal in this case, who shot Sam through the femoral artery and of utmost, of utmost importance left Sam bleeding to death being accepted over those of my son, the victim. Mrs. Connolly, Sergeant Bennis and others which are included in the subsequent trashed excellent Portland Police Department report. How on earth can you, Mrs. Anderson, the district attorney from the largest city in Maine, be complicit in the rewriting of the original charges, a rewriting which does not relate to in any way to what happened on my son's porch last Memorial Day. How on earth can any of you working in your office sleep at night when you know the ADA Sharbeck, under whose instructions steered the grand jury hearing in order to issue indictments, identical indictments, felonies for Fred Dodge and Sam? As you know, Fred Dodge was given Neil Duffett, an unaccomplished public defender, Maine taxpayer funded, while Sam, who was according to the doctor who operated on him one minute from death upon arrival at the hospital has to pay huge legal and medical hospital bills. Sam, prior to your illegal unconstitutional actions, had never been considered other than a victim. You threw my son Sam under the bus with the criminal Fred Dodge and made Sam into a defendant, changed his prior status of victim to defendant, 
Sam, from the very beginning to the end of this horrible saga, has had all applicable U.S. constitutional rights violated, include uh, the First Amendment, Congress shall make the Second Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, which is um, papers and um, unreasonable searches and seizures, the, the Sixth Amendment, all criminal prosecutions um, shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial, the Eighth Amendment, excessive bail, the Tenth Amendment, <laughs> she just goes through all the amendments. The right to own and use a gun to defend himself and his property. Also, as you know, and of utmost importance, Sam did not react to Fred's threats. Um, his trespass on Sam's property with a gun by shooting Fred Dodge, Sam didn't even get out of his chair. Sam intends to pursue justice, not just for himself, but for the taxpayer citizens of Portland and for this entire country. As you know, he has served his country in combat as an active duty U.S. Marine in Gulf War I. Sam saved over 20 lives in the U.S. Marine Corps, um, Corps compatriots in a special operation mission. How ironic can it be that Sam survived intense combat in the war only to come home to find himself under attack? Two murderous attempts over a six month period, one on PPD audio in Portland, Maine, where he is a homeowner and taxpayer and where he has committed no crime whatsoever. Please respond to this letter. Thank you in advance. Sincerely, um, Charlotte Thomas Isserbet, and then she puts her address there and her email address. I mean, this is an interesting story for sure. Let's uh, go back and look at this next link here. Uh, the attempted assassination of Sam Isserbet. Here's the, uh, this looks like it's a news report. The attempted assassination of Sam Isserbite, today former senior policy advisor in the Office of Education Research and Improvement for the U.S. Department of Education, Charlotte Thomas Isserbite will testify against Governor Janet Mills nomination of Michael Soshuk for the position of the Maine State Public Safety Commissioner. Isserbite's prepared testimony, Isserbite's prepared testimony, which can be read here, documents that between 2007 and 2017, former police chief Sash um, Chuck solved only 57% of Portland's homicide cases, which is 30% below the statewide average and 43% below the city of Bangor, Maine, where 100% of all murder cases have been solved during the recent 2007 to 2017. Isserbeck's testimony also alleges that former chief Sash Chuck attempted to assassinate her son, Sam Isserbite, who is a U.S. veteran of the Gulf War I. In uh, the month of October 2015, the main U.S. home of Sam Isserbite was visited by several armed Portland Police Department officers who arrested him on misdemeanor charges of harassing Portland Police Chief Michael Soschuk's wife, Mary Soschuk. The Cumberland County District Attorney's Office later threw out these charges in response to Sam's pro se motion court filings as a result of his pro se discovery process during um, court proceedings. He obtained an audio recording of his conversation with law enforcement at his home. The audio file, the audio file which can be listened to here, records one of the officers clearly saying, I figured if he moved I could just pop him right in the head right there. Laughter is then heard from the other officers in the background. I'm just curious what this audio sounds like. Right ahead, right there. That's my plan. 
So you can you heard in that audio of the officer I mean it sounds like they're leaving the house they're walking back they're talking amongst themselves and then he says clearly um, if he moved I figured if he moved I could just pop him right in the head right there and then of course you hear laughter from the officer in the background um, and the first officer then admits his intention to pop Isser bite in the head that was my plan amazing wow absolute these officers should have been fired over this. If they're still working for the Portland Police Department, it's a travesty. That is horrible. Then an audible response from the other officer is recorded. You did it yourself, replies the other officer. I was all ready to go. Another officer is faintly recorded saying, it's not federal now. About, about seven months later on May 30, uh, Memorial Day 2016, Isserbite was shot in his femoral artery while sitting on his porch, ultimately suffering hyperbole uh, shock, um, which almost took his life. A photograph of Isserbite's blood-soaked jeans can be seen here on the website his mother, Charlotte Isserbite, put up, which we saw earlier, but, well, maybe it's at the bottom. Oh, here, here they are. On May 31, 2016, the Portland Press Herald reported on the shooting. Interestingly, this news story includes the following response from the Portland PD. Assistant Police Chief Vern Mollock declined to discuss the harassment case from October 2015 because there was no conviction, but said that Mary Soschuk um, has no involvement in the current shooting case. From Assistant Chief Mollock's reply, it can be inferred that there was an inquiry into whether Mary Soschuk was in some way responsible for the shooting of Sam Isserbite. This is incredible because Mary Soschuk is the wife of the current police commissioner of Maine, Michael Soschuk. Why is it that it's the same names that are always involved in this corruption? We need to get rid of Michael Soschuk, we need to get rid of the chief of the Maine State Police, we need to get rid of just a bunch of corrupt police officers. We have corrupt people in the politics. According to another Portland Police Herald article published on June 10, 2016, Isserbite accidentally shot himself in the leg during a scuffle with a man who was quarreling uh, with Sam over a woman. Okay, that gives us more context. A similar report of the shooting was posted online by Portland's West End Neighborhood Association, which is a local governing body in the municipality where he was shot. However, Isserbite um, has maintained that he was shot by Fred O. Dodge, Otis Jaw Dodge. According to Sam's mother, um, Charlotte Isserbite, who is the acclaimed author of The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, the original um, case filing in Cumberland County, contained in the initial Portland Police Department's report in which a suspect description report from Lieutenant Detective Rick Beaumont named Frederick Dodge as a suspect of elevated aggra um, aggravated assault against Sam Isserbach, who was named as the victim. Charlotte claims that Beaumont's suspect description report was put together with reports from the crime scene supervisor, Detective Dean Goodall, who recorded signed eyewitness reports from at least five persons, including that of Sam's neighbor, who had bird's eye view of the entire incident. Nonetheless, the Beaumont Goodall report was trashed, says Charlotte, who alleges that this report has been impounded and sealed from admission to the case of Sam's shooting. As a result, the Cumberland County DA's office charged both Sam Isserbite and Fred Dodge with the same felony crimes, criminal threatening with a dangerous weapon, and reckless conduct with a dangerous weapon. After both Dodge and Isserbite um, asserted that they would exercise their Fifth Amendment rights if called to testify, the Cumberland County District Attorney's Office dropped the case, the charges against both men, um, according to the May 2017 Portland Press 
Herald article. The news story reported that both men were armed when Dodge walked to Isserbite's home, where Isserbite was waiting for him on the porch. Isserbite was shot when he and Dodge struggled over Isserbite's handgun. Um, the account of the incident seems to corroborate the account allegedly provided to the Beaumont Goodall police report, which begs the question, if Dodge approached the home of Isserbite, who by all accounts was apparently defending himself at his own home, then why is Isserbite charged with criminal threatening with a dangerous weapon? Question. That's a good, excellent question. Why was Isserbite, a Marine combat veteran, legally protecting, protected in exercising his Second Amendment rights with a lawful registered firearm on the premises of his own home. Moreover, consider that Charlotte Isserbite's version of the shooting is consistent with both the alleged Beaumont Goodall report as well as the 2017th edition of the Portland Press Herald, cross-referencing the parallels across these three accounts. It is reasonable to ask another question. Who supposedly gave the order to impound the police report allegedly submitted by Detective Beaumont and Sergeant Goodall? Excellent question. Um, Sam and Charlotte Isserbite alleged that the op, uh, op obfuscation of Goodall's police report was orchestrated by Cumberland County DA Stephanie Anderson and her assistant DA Jonathan Shawbreck back in collusion with AG Janet Mills and her assistant AG Lisa Marches. Mer Marches which again, these names are all familiar in other corruption cases that I've looked into in Maine. And the fact that the commissioner of the police in Maine, the police commissioner in Maine, is the wife of the very person that um, supposedly this Isserbite guy was harassing. I mean, and of course, probably by that she was just calling her out for some sort of corruption. We haven't got to that part of the story yet. But to me, this looks like attempted murder, assassination, and then... Maybe there was a scuffle, but he got shot in the, who would shoot themselves in the femur over a woman or in the articular artery over a woman? That just doesn't make any sense to me. It should be noted that according to the Portland Plus Press Herald printed in 2017 in court filings, Isserbay alleged that police only charged him because he had begun the process of bringing a civil lawsuit against the district attorney's office and police for their handling of the case, which would be a good way to discredit him if they charge him with a crime. District Attorney Anderson has since retired. Shawbeck has replaced her. Janet Mills has since became the governor of Maine. And in her new role as governor, the former AG has nominated Portland Police Chief Shawbeck for the position of Public Safety Commissioner, which oversees the Capitol Police Consolidating Emergency Communications, the Maine Criminal Justice Academy for the Maine Drug Enforcement Agency, Emergency Medical Services, and uh, the State Fire Marshal's Office, Gambling Control, Highway Safety, and the Maine State Police, according to the Portland Press Herald. Before Mills tapped Soshek for his promotion from the Portland PD Chief to the Maine Public Safety Commissioner, he was publicly accused of sending Fred Dodge as a hitman to murder Sam Isserbite. On June 30, 2017, Isserbite attended a Maine Heritage Luncheon where he publicly accused Soshek of or orchestrating an alleged hit. Accompanied by Stephen Scran, Isserbite made these accusations in front of the heritage, of a heritage crowd during a confrontation with the mayor of Portland, Ethan Strim, um, Strimling, as luncheon attendees listened. Isserbite and Schran publicly stated that Sam had provided Strimling with the discovery audio recording of a Portland PD officer stating that he was planning to pop Sam in the head in the month of October 2015. Isserbite and, Sush and Scran then um, asked Strimling why he, as mayor of Portland, did not respond by launching a special investigation into the discovery audio. When the Portland mayor denied being able to recall anything about the audio file, Isserbite and Scran offered to play the audio for the crowd. However, the director of Heritage Maine, Matt Gagnon, interjected, I don't think right now is the time for this. Have a private conversation afterward. Then the crowd summarily told Sam to sit down. You can listen to the audio of the encounter here. Sam and Charlotte Isserbite have leveled serious accusations against former police chief Sostek, district attorney um, Sharbrook, and Governor Mills based solely on the publicly available reports. Neither this journalist nor the reader has a complete picture of the events surrounding the shooting of Sam Isserbite. 
in the United States of America, according to the Constitution rule of law, everyone is innocent until proven guilty, but no one can be proven guilty, either guilty or innocent, unless there is a full public disclosure concerning the facts of the matter. In the matter of Sam shooting, the complete factual picture of the case cannot be proven until all court filings regarding the incident are made available to the public um, record for review by the taxpayer's citizenry of the Portland, Maine. Uh, full disclosure, Charlotte Thomas Isserbet is my friend and principal researcher associated associate who helped me write um, School World War. Um, so that's that article, um, which is painting a crazy picture of uh, this whole incident and how it unfolded. Um, she also sent me the link to... Uh, all my articles and interviews over many years are at my DeliberateDumbingDown.com website. Um, so she wrote a book called Deliberate Dumbing Down. I'm not sure. There's a picture of Charlotte. These are some of her books and articles. I'm not sure if um, we should say, because the one question I have right now is, what happened between Mrs. Soschuk and her son Sam? I don't think we have an answer to that right now. Here is uh, her Wikipedia page. Is an American freelance writer and former senior policy advisor to the U.S. Department of Education. Um, so um, she's an author, um, very prolific author. There's no reason to believe that she's telling us lies, but I think that we need to know the answer. What happened between her son and, I guess, Mary Soschuk, the wife of um, the Maine State Police Commissioner Soschuk. But this whole thing rings true to me, that um, there is corruption here. It seems like there's cronyism here. It seems like... Uh, Sam must have stumbled upon something to do with Mary Soschuk and then these police officers based on that recording I mean I guess you could make the argument they were just joking around but who jokes around yeah I was gonna kill the guy that's not really joking around so that doesn't make sense to me and even if it was joking around they should be immediately fired I'm curious if they still work for the Portland Police Department so that's a question that needs to be addressed um, number one, what was what happened between Mary and Sam? Number two, are those police officers still working for the Portland Police Department? Because regardless, making a statement like that is should be immediate grounds for getting fired. Um, I guess question three is where is the case at right now? Um, these are just questions I'm coming up with in my head as I'm reading through this email and all the information I received for the first time. Um, but everything that I'm reading here rings true. To me, anyway, uh, let's keep the conversation going. Let me know what questions you come up with as a result of listening to this. I think I will. I don't have time today, but um, I think I will call um, Charlotte and just have a quick question with her. Actually. I'll keep you updated on this story. My This story has definitely sparked my interest because um, it has all the ingredients of corruption right down to a lot of the same names are involved in this. Um, I just can't believe because it seems like this is another case where it's like they're not even trying to hide the fact that they're being corrupt. Um, Hit the like button so this video gets spread around. I think this is a different way to cover this story, but I think we've got most of the ingredients of the story down. I'll post updates in the comments in the description below. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on this story. Um, also share this. If you have any information about this story, please email me or um, write it in the comment section. This is an interesting and fascinating story about basically the main, I mean, I think if I were to give it a headline, I would say the police commissioner of Maine 
accused of attempted murder. I'd like to give a shout out to the main fusion center, a secret main state police department set up in the wake of 9-11 to spy on terrorists, but now spy on anybody who's a little critical of the state of Maine. They have spied on me, they've spied on um, peaceful protesters, um, they've spied on people that were against a power line going through Maine, they've spied on uh, Black Lives Matter protesters, and they are my most loyal fan. They've watched all my videos, read all my posts, so a big shout out to the Maine State Police Fusion Center. These videos do take a lot of time. I don't make money on them, so if you would not mind, go check out my website, um, nationalsi.com, and um, if you know anybody who does insurance fraud assignments, um, insurance adjusters, lawyers, um, please email me their contact information so that I can reach out to them. Um, I'm in the New England area. I'm licensed um, in uh, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont. I work in Rhode Island, and also I'm, I'm down in the south, too, in Tennessee. Um, uh, so any of those areas are are great. If you know people that are in the industry, please forward their information. It would be very, very helpful. Um, also, check out my store. Um, you can buy cool t-shirts and uh, mugs and different things that help support my work. I just want to get to the truth. That's my goal with every case, with every um, story that I do. And um, the truth and uncovering the truth is very important, no matter where it leads. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare place for you. And if I go and prepare place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. <laughs>